As we wind down our introduction to programming series, we want to take some time and talk about some of the soft skills needed to be a successful computer scientist, since it's not all about writing code. In fact, many people in the industry of computer science will tell you that the majority of their job is spent thinking about code rather than writing it. This is because much of computer programming is about problem solving. How do we optimize this system? How can we make this feature for our app? What type of movement do we want for our game and how can we program it? The harsh truth is that no good program has ever been written simply from the programmer getting the prompt or idea, sitting down, hopping on an IDE, and starting to write code. There are many tasks we must complete beforehand in order to plan out our code so we can ensure that when the time comes to program, it's a clean and easy process and not riddled with mistakes and bugs. This is where pseudocode comes into play. Think of pseudocode like this. If you wanted to go and plan a trip to the Grand Canyon, would you simply hop in your car and drive off and figure things out later? No, because that would be ridiculous. Instead, you would spend some time planning out the trip. What sites or places do you want to visit? What hotel reservations are you going to have to make? What kind of things are you going to do when you get there? What routes or highways are you going to take and why? All of these things must be determined before you can even think about hopping in your Ford Explorer. So how does this translate to pseudocode? Well, programmers use pseudocode, pseudo meaning not real, and code meaning, well, code, as a means to plan out their programs before they write them. They throw away syntax and naming conventions for variables and just focus on what they want the program to accomplish and how they plan on doing that. Pseudocode is very similar to constructing an outline for a paper you're writing in English. You write down the main topics of the essay and plan out your major talking points, but you don't worry about the nitty gritty details of it all, such as word choice, grammar, conventions, and proper formatting. So now that we know what pseudocode is, let's talk about how we write pseudocode. You see, the best part about pseudocode is that it can take the form of many different things for many different people. Since there are probably hundreds of different methods of writing pseudocode that are used by computer scientists today, I'd like to focus on three popular ones which I believe to be extremely useful. The first of these three is using flowcharts to think through the process of certain functions. Many programmers do this and lay out the conditional statements and loops they want as different blocks in the flowchart and then begin testing cases. Uh, if the user enters this number, I want the program to do this. However, if the user doesn't, then return this. It's a great way to visualize what the function's overall purpose is and also look for any errors that you may have missed when thinking about the function. Additionally, it abstracts the programming statements up to simple blocks, making it easier to modify and change. The best part is that when you have finished testing cases, you can simply convert the blocks into statements and you have a well-written function without any debugging needed. Another popular pseudocode technique that is used often is to simply write out what you want your code to do chronologically. Don't necessarily think about how you want to do it, just talk about from start to finish what is the program you are writing going to complete step by step. For example, let's say you're making an app that takes in two numbers and divides them. The pseudocode for that would look something like this. First, I want to wait for the user to input the first number. After I get the first number, I want to wait again for the user to input the second number. Finally, after the user has inputted the second number, I want to divide the two numbers and return the result back to the user. This all seems like it would be complete common sense, but remember that oftentimes we're not going to be working with simple division functions. We may be working with full-scale games, algorithms, or user interfaces with many different options. This method allows you, the programmer, to not get bogged down with the syntax and conventions you have to follow. You're just making a note of what the program's ultimate goal should be, as if you were explaining it to a friend of yours. This method really lets you plan out everything that needs to happen in your program in order for it to run smoothly. This way, you don't forget about a piece of an algorithm or a certain function that you need to write in afterwards. The final pseudocode strategy that I'd like to talk about today is writing out the main features you want the user to have when using your program, and what functions or smaller programs you're going to need to complete those features. Let's do another example. Say you're making a banking interface, and you want the user to initially have two different options. They can set up a new account or log into their existing account. From there, if they log into their account, then you want them to be able to withdraw money, deposit money, take out a loan, or pay back a loan. If they decide to set up a new account, you want them to be able to create an account and then access all of the features that a returning member would have normally. This may look very similar to the flowchart, the only difference being that this is abstracted one level higher over an entire program rather than just a single function. 
showing how commonplace and flexible user graphics can be. Setting up the hierarchy, like seen on your screen now, makes it clear to see every function and interface you're going to have to make. This prevents you from having to try and shoehorn a function or feature into an almost finished program at the last second, which is not a very fun experience in the slightest. So there you have it, three pseudocode strategies you can use to plan out your code before you even start writing any. You can use none of them, all of them, a mix of them, or even disregard these and find and create your own. The main goal here is to drastically minimize the amount of errors that occur during programming and relieve a lot of stress on your head. And so whatever method you decide to use will work. That's all for today. Next episode, we'll stop talking about programming altogether and go over how to move on once this series is over and how to pick the right programming language to study. If you enjoyed this episode, consider subscribing and click on the playlist to the right to see the rest of the videos in the series. Stay tuned for more wacky and zany content. Thanks for watching.